Let's talk about how we can deal with reflexive pronouns using the functional approach. So Trevor praised himself. Let's just look at what we know so far using types and everything. So we know that praise is going to be a transitive verb. So this is going to be type E-E-T. So I'm going to write it like this, and that's going to propagate up the tree. The VP praised himself should be type E-T. Trevor should be an E, and the S should be type T. Now, when it comes to himself, this isn't really just an entity. So if we establish that this is just E, we're going to get a type match, and we're going to get the ET out of it. But how are we going to connect Trevor with himself? So actually, there's another way that we can look at this puzzle. So if, for example, if I want an EET, and what I want to get out is an ET, there's two ways we can satisfy this. We can either do E plus our EET, or we could do something a little bit different and take an EET comma ET plus our EET. So in other words, we're making the new input what our praised is, what our transitive verb is, which means that himself is going to take praise as an argument rather than the other way around. So I want to suggest, and this is how I'm going to write this, is that this is an EET, ET, EET, ET, with commas like that. And then as these two combine, we're going to get something else that occurs. We're going to get our ET out, but the form of himself is going to be different. So what does himself look like in this case? Well, let's think about what it's trying to do. At the end of the day, we're trying to say that whatever the subject of the praise is, so praised X, it's really like praised XX. So there's some sort of binding involved. We also know because it's an EET, that there's some sort of transitivity here. So what I'm going to propose is that we label himself as such. We're going to make um, a function, let's call this lambda p, and then we're going to take an entity lambda x, and what we're going to do is we're going to apply the predicate, and in order to get that reflexive meaning where the subject and the object are the same thing, we're going to apply x to it twice. So what exactly does this mean here? Well, what this means is that when we apply a verb like praised in this case, what's going to happen is we're going to get that praised and x and x is what's established, and we're going to get our lambda x at the end once we apply it. And then we can then apply our subject Trevor to that sentence. So let's see how this looks in practice. So I'm going to say that Trevor is T, and that's going to move up. Praised is going to be lambda y dot lambda x dot x praised y. So that's object first and then subject. That is going to move up the tree. So lambda y dot lambda x dot x praised y. And now let's see himself. So we said that himself is going to be lambda p lambda x dot p x x. And we're going to move this up the tree and we're going to see how this applies. So we're going up here. And now for our application, I'm going to do this in a different color. So we're taking lambda p lambda x dot p x x as our function. And we're going to apply lambda y dot lambda x dot x praised y to it. Now, okay, we have a couple lambda x's here, but it doesn't matter because here's what's going to happen. We're going to do the step by step. So first of all, we're going to insert the function into p. So we have lambda x, and now we're going to have lambda y dot lambda x dot x praised y. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply x and x to it. So the first x is going to replace the lambda y's and the second x is going to replace the lambda x's. And what we're going to be left in the end with is lambda x, then everything in the square brackets just gets reduced to x praised x. Now what's going to happen when we apply t to it at the sentence? Well, this is going to be true if and only if Trevor t praised Trevor t, because we're going to be ending up applying t to that function lambda x dot x praised x. So at first this doesn't seem intuitive because shouldn't all NPs just be entities then? 
but it's because of the reflexive nature of the pronoun where it needs to do some sort of binding with both of the variables. And the pronoun is where that binding is going to occur. It's built into it with this PXX sort of deal. So before what we saw in previous lessons was with is, we get lambda p dot p or alternatively lambda p dot lambda x dot px. This is really the same thing, except here we're just dealing with something that's more intransitive in nature than with the case of what we just looked at, which is the self pronoun, which would be lambda p, lambda x, px, x, where we have this binding occurring. 